Welcome to The Legal Code, the YouTube channel dedicated to discussing various legal topics. If it's your first time here, we discuss all sorts of legal topics, whether that's trademark, copyright, protecting your small business, fraud schemes going on. This is an informative channel so that you can know what's going on around you and that you can be protected uh, regarding whatever next steps you may be taking in your business and in your personal life. If you like that sort of thing, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with anyone else you think will find value. Also, I'm a real life attorney, so I have some legal consultation slots available. So if you would like the opportunity to work with an attorney one-on-one -on -one to discussing your legal needs, whether that's estate planning, you have questions regarding trademark, if you have questions regarding copyright, are you liable for something? Um, if you're in some sort of legal conundrum, you can contact me. The link is in the description box. Now, without further ado, we're discussing Facebook and why companies fight tooth and nail to protect their trademark and brand name and why this is important for you to know. When Facebook changed its name from Meta back in October 2021, it was not just a rebranding the company took in an effort to distance itself from the backlash and criticism for their questionable ethical practices. What we did not imagine was that Facebook was actually stepping on the toes of another company when Facebook took the name Meta and renamed itself. A small installation art company by the name of Meta announced that it plans to sue Facebook for trademark violation, alleging that Zuckerberg's name chain violated the smaller company's established brand. According to the company, on October 28, 2021, Facebook seized our Meta mark which we put our blood, sweat, and tears into building for over 12 years. Today, after eight months of trying to negotiate with Facebook to no avail, we were left with no other choice but to file a lawsuit against Facebook. Meta can no longer provide goods and services under the Meta mark because of consumer confusion, likely to mistakenly believe that Meta's goods and services emanate from Facebook and that Meta is associated with the controversy that is attached and inextricably linked with Facebook. So you may be asking, why are trademarks so important? Who cares if another company shares the name or logo of another, another company? The answer lies in you and your pockets. Companies are obsessed with making sure you recognize their company in the sea of competition from other companies. And that recognition happens when you recognize their name and buy from them instead of buying from another company. The consumer confusion is not a moral conundrum. It's about getting into your pockets. Trademarks protect brands and consumers from confusion, which is why companies fight tooth and nail to protect their brand and to make sure they stand out from other companies and that other companies are not deliberately or inadvertently using their brand name and in essence taking their customers. They want to create a niche consumer experience that makes you continue to come back and patronize them that's attached to their name. With that name carries social currency that is integral to the company's success and profits. So when another company takes their name or their look, they risk losing their, com their customers and that affects their profit margin because they assume customers won't know the difference and buy from this company as opposed to their company. So how do you fight a trademark claim? How do you sue someone who's stolen your brand name? Well, to support a trademark infringement claim, a plaintiff must prove that it owns a valid mark and that it has priority or rights to the mark are senior to that of the other company, that their mark is older and out in commerce longer than the secondary mark. Essentially, the company had their mark first. Next, the company must prove that the defendant's mark in commerce is likely to cause consumer confusion in the mind of the consumer about the source of the goods or the services, that customers will not be able to differentiate one company from the next. So that's essentially the consumer confusion. One thing to note, 
It's not necessary to have a registered trademark in order to bring a lawsuit. However, if a company has registered their trademark with USPTO and therefore owns a federal trademark registration, there is a legal presumption of the validity and the ownership of that mark, as well as an exclusive right to use that mark nationwide or in connection with the goods or services that are listed in the registration. So there's a legal presumption that this mark was in the world out in commerce prior to the second mark if there's a legally registered trademark. Again, it's not required as it is with copyright in order to bring a lawsuit. With copyright infringement, you must actually have a registered copyright in order to bring a lawsuit into court. With trademark, it's not required. The court will consider different evidence addressing various factors to determine whether there's a likelihood of confusion among consumers. The key factors that are considered in most cases are the similarities between the marks and whether or not the party's goods and services are related to one another. They occupy the same area of commerce and so are likely to be mistakenly, a uh, consumer is likely to mistaken this company's goods and services with another because they occupy occupy the same industry. Also, they'll look at how and where the party's goods are served, are, are advertised, marketed, and sold, purchasing conditions, the range of prospective purchasers, whether or not the, the range of prices are similar, whether there's evidence of actual confusion caused by the marks, uh, where there's evidence where a consumer bought one good thinking that it belonged to another company's. And so that is how most courts determine whether or not there's likelihood of confusion. And so the court weighs these factors. In many instances, the court may even do uh, like a survey and ask a group of people whether or not there's likelihood of confusion. If this consumer was in the store, would this consumer mistakenly purchase one good thinking that it was another brand's good? So the court will look at the mark of each of these companies and decide whether or not chronologically the second use causes confusion for the first company. Again, they will use surveys and perhaps mass research to see if the names, if placed back to back, actually cause consumer confusion. In addition to claiming likelihood of confusion, a trademark owner may also claim dilution, which is really, really important to brand identity, asserting that it owns a famous mark and the use of the other company's mark diminishes the strength or value of the trademark owner's mark by blurring the mark's distinctiveness or tarnishes the mark's image by connecting it to something distasteful or objective objectionable, even if there's no likely, likelihood of confusion. So Meta would likely use this to say that the controversy associated with Facebook now negatively impacts Meta because consumers will think that they're linked together and associated with Facebook. So brands in essence put a lot of work into the intrinsic meaning of their brand. They want to create a niche experience for their consumers and at the same time distance themselves with something that could be seen as distasteful with their mark. So they want to avoid consumer confusion as well as dilution, which is why lawsuits are so important to pursue to protect the deterioration of the brand. Meta has a valid trademark for the name, but may still be facing an uphill battle in court given the broad range of trademark applications that the Facebook machine has made since the name change became official last year, including separate marks for messaging, social network, financial service. There are also a number of trademarks claiming the meta name for non-tech products, including seltzer water or manufacturing of prosthetic limbs. So what Facebook did was do like as an, an all encompassing trademark, trying to tap into as many industries as possible. I know what you may be thinking. Facebook has a suite of lawyers. Why didn't anyone double check to make sure Facebook was not stepping on the toes of another company? Could it be legal oversight? 
that's unlikely given the resources and that Facebook has and the influence Facebook has. I would not chalk this up to mistake if you ask me. I know this because as a lawyer, any lawyer worth his or her salt would just do the preliminary research if a company approached them and said, I want to use this name for my new company or my new brand. A lawyer would of course just do a basic search on Google as well as the USPTO's office. So like I said, it's a very preliminary and rudimentary step in trademark. And so for Facebook, to miss this step, it's very unlikely that it was a legal oversight and perhaps something else. And so we are left with that, but this is not the first time where a big company has sort of taking the brand identity of a smaller company. We see this time and time again, and we wonder why the the attorneys of this bigger company weren't more thorough but again it's very unlikely this is chalked up to recklessness or carelessness and perhaps is a smoking gun for something else hubris perhaps let me know your thoughts let me know if you have any questions regarding trademark do you think um that the smaller meta company stands a chance against the girth of Facebook and the Facebook sh machine? What do you think, what do you think is going on here? Do you think this is attention seeking that Facebook didn't care whether or not they were stepping on the toes of another company that they wanted the attention, bad, good, or indifferent that the publicity would bring and have people talking about Facebook, whether that mattered more than this trademark infringement claim that they would be facing. Let me know your thoughts. Again, this is The Legal Code. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with anyone else you think will find value. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.